Hello, my name is Randy Bush. I'm the interim pastor here at Woods Memorial Presbyterian Church in Severna Park. It's great having you with us for this little podcast that we're calling Into the Words. This is the next to last one. We offer these podcasts on a weekly basis, and uh, they've looked at a variety of books, both fiction and nonfiction and poetry. And uh, many of the books have had themes that are not directly related to faith. But today's book and author is one that's written on a topic and a theme that is grounded in Christianity. So we'll be looking at a book called My Bright Abyss by a writer named Christian Wyman. And the subtitle is Meditation of a Modern Believer. Wyman was born in 1966, and in many ways he's a poet. Most of his other books are collections of poetry. But at a certain point in his life, he was diagnosed with cancer and had to receive bone marrow uh, replacement procedures. And as part of that, he began reflecting on what it means to be a person of faith, even as he faces the reality of finitude. In the introduction on the flap of the book itself, it says that seven years ago, Christian Wyman, a well-known poet, editor of Poetry Magazine, wrote a now famous essay about having faith in the face of death. My Bright Abyss, composed in the difficult years since completing a bone marrow transplant, is a moving meditation on what a viable contemporary faith might look like. It's a short book, and it's a very accessible book, and it's not really structured into chapters as much as it's broken into short paragraphs that are meditative in style. Wyman has gone on to teach in other places, including now being on the faculty at Yale Divinity School. So I've pulled out three little selections from the book, and I recommend it as something that could be on a nightstand that you simply read in small doses and reflect on the very vibrant way he talks about faith in these times and all the various stages of our life. And so these are three little descriptions around the topic of faith beginning with these words. He says, Life is not an error, even when it is. That is to say, whatever faith you emerge with at the end of your life is going to be not simply affected by that life, but intimately dependent upon it. For faith in God is, in the deepest sense, faith in life which means that even the staunchest life of faith is a life of great change. It follows that if you believe at 50 what you believed at 15, well, then you have not lived or you have denied the reality of your life. If you believe at 50 or 60 or 70, your faith has likely grown along with you over the years. He carries on a bit more about this in talking about God and how difficult sometimes it is to even have those conversations. He writes, It is a strange thing how sometimes merely to talk honestly of God, even if it is only to articulate our feelings of separation and confusion, can actually bring peace to our spirits. You thought you were unhappy because this or that was off in your relationships. This or that was wrong in your job. But the reality is that your sadness stemmed from your aversion to, your stalwart avoidance of God. The other problems may very well be true, and you will have to address them. But what you feel when releasing yourself to speak of the deepest needs of your spirit is the fact that no other needs can be spoken of outside of that context. You cannot work on the structure of your life if the ground of your being is unsure. I like that last sentence and have used it in sermons. You cannot work on the structure of your life if the ground of your being is unsure. The book moves on. Again, it's a total of maybe 180 pages. And near the very end, he then offers these words that are ultimately words of grace. He says, we are each of us, every single one of us, meant to be a lens for truths that we ourselves cannot see. Quote, the system cannot include the systematizer, 
unquote, Kierkegaard once said. And it's a clunky but accurate formulation of a problem that applies even to people who don't have a philosophical bone in their bodies. Our lives burn up, and our minds within them, and all that we have sought so hard to retain in art, or durable projects, or familial memory. But to live in faith is to live toward a truth that we can but dimly sense, if at all. And to die in faith is to leave an afterimage whose dimensions and meanings we could never even have guessed at. Something of us, something most us and least us, is saved and is made available for others. This is as true of the politician as it is of the poet, as true of the teacher or the preacher, the mother or the father, as it is of the Danish philosopher. So our lives burn up, but something remains that is most us we could only dimly guess at. On some level, that's troubling as we think about trying to leave a legacy, but on some level, it's actually freeing that who we are, the way we've touched lives and moved gently over this earth during our time here, leaves a mark and perhaps a story in remembrance that we can't control. And that in itself is an act of grace. So thank you for this time as we've thought about these words from Christian Wyman, the bright abyss of our lives, and as we've delved in this podcast into the words.